Greetings everyone and welcome to this tutorial video on installing CouchDB on Windows. A few things to note before we get started. We are going to be installing CouchDB version 3.1 which is available at couchdb.apache.org. Also, you're going to need to make sure you have Microsoft.NET 3.5 Service Pack 1 installed. It's likely this is already on your computer, but if not, you can Google for a Microsoft.NET 3.5 SP1 and find the page to download that. We're also going to be using Curl, which is a utility that allows us to connect to web services directly. Uh, this is automatically installed in Windows 10 and on Mac computers. However, if you have a different operating system, you can download it from the URL shown here. And finally, if you are on a Mac or if you want to install on a Linux instance in AWS, there are really great instructions similar to what I'm going through here on CouchDB's website. Uh, so I would just refer you to that for the installation process there. So at this point, let's flip over to the computer we want to install CouchDB on and get started. All right, so here we have the computer that I want to install CouchDB on. Note that this computer already has .NET 3.5 Service Pack 1 and curl installed on it. So I'm just going to launch a web browser to go to the uh, CouchDB website. I'm going to just Google CouchDB and the very first result is couchdb.apache.org, which is where we want to download this from. Go to this website, click on the download tab and then download for Windows version 3.1.0. And this will take just about a minute or so to download. Great, now once this is downloaded, I'm going to close that window and then navigate to my downloads folder. And here's the installer for Apache CouchDB. So I'll double click on that, click run, just going to accept the defaults here. And now here is one place that uh, our installation of CouchDB is a little bit different than what is described in the book because CouchDB version three and beyond does actually create an administrator account by default. And that's what it's asking for here. So I'm going to create an account named admin and I am going to give it a password of password 1234 with a capital P. And of course, you should make your password something different and not tell everyone on YouTube like I am doing. Uh, however, in an example in just a minute, I'm going to need to share this password with you anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what it is. Click on validate credentials and that will activate the next button. So we'll click that and then click install. The install takes only a moment to complete. And once this is done, we are ready to use CouchDB. Now to connect to CouchDB, I am just going to launch my web browser. And for the URL, I'm going to go to HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 5984, that is the port that CouchDB runs on, forward slash underscore UTILS. And now we have the login page for the CouchDB management console known as Photon. And we can't really do very much until we log in. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. Admin, password 1234. And now we are logged in and connected to CouchDB. So just to demonstrate that things really are working here, I'm going to create a new database. I'm gonna call this students, and it will be a non-partitioned database, and then click the Create button. And now I have a database called students. I can add a new document. And I have some JSON over here that I'm just going to copy and paste. So CouchDB automatically gives us this ID value. It looks very similar to a key in MongoDB. And when I click Create Document, 
you see we now have this document in our CouchDB database. I'll do just a couple more here for a good measure. So copy and paste that. Let's do one more this way and then I'm going to demonstrate one other way to interact with CouchDB. Okay, so this is interacting with CouchDB through Photon, but now we're going to look at how we can interact with curl. So I'm going to open up a command prompt here. And you see if I just type curl, I get feedback that curl is indeed installed. Uh, we just haven't told curl what we would like to do. And if we connect to our couch instance by saying curl http colon slash slash and kind of the easiest way to authenticate to CouchDB is just to pass the username and password to the server in the URL. Now, this is not a terribly secure thing to do. There are other better ways to authenticate to CouchDB, but for the purpose of our demonstrations here, this is what we are going to be doing. So I'm going to say admin colon password 1234 at uh, localhost colon 5984 and we get some response back saying that uh, we have CouchDB installed and running. Okay. If we wanted to see a particular record in our students database, we can put a slash students at the end of that and then I'm going to copy one of our IDs here. I'm going to copy that and then put this in the URL. And when I hit enter, CouchDB returns the JSON document corresponding to that ID value. We can also write to CouchDB using curl. And uh, this is a little bit more in depth of a command. So I'm going to copy and paste the whole thing. And then we will walk through what this is doing. So we say curl dash I dash x post telling uh, curl that we're sending this uh, JSON document to the uh, server. And here is the URL of the server, including the database that we're writing the document to dash H content type application slash JSON. So we're just uh, defining the type of object that we're sending to CouchDB and then dash D and the JSON object that we want to write into our database. Now, one kind of funny thing about using curl on Windows is we have to escape our quotation marks. So that means any quotation marks that are inside our JSON object, we put this backslash in front of. So that's why this looks a little bit weird. You wouldn't have to do this if you were on a Mac or running curl on Linux. But anyway, this is our object that we are passing into CouchDB. And then CouchDB says, okay, I wrote this object and here is the ID value that I have assigned it. So I can actually highlight that and we can look up this record that we just wrote, which is about Edgar Franklin. So we read this and here is the document that CouchDB returns for us. And of course, if we flip back over to Photon and refresh our set of documents, oh goodness, I think our uh, session must have timed out. So I'm going to just log in again. Here we'll look at our documents in our students database again. And you can see where we previously had three documents. We now have four. If we click on this fourth one, it is the Edgar Franklin student that we just uh, inserted at the command line. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Go forth and do great things.